So as we look at these operations, addition, subtraction, and multiplication are valid for all real numbers. So if you're just adding, you're just subtracting, you're just multiplying variables, since variables are just taking on number values, then you're able to do that for any value of the variable or variables if you have multiple variables. So that operation is fine. And then we come to our good old buddy, division. Can we divide any two real numbers we want and get a real number? As long as the two numbers aren't zero, we're okay. But if the second, the number we're dividing by is zero, then we can't. So this is true for all real numbers, C and D, such that D is not equal to zero. All right, we can't divide by zero. And the context here is that we're taking the fraction C over D. So make it clear that D is the denominator. So if we have a problem with some variable expressions where we have variables showing up in the denominator, we have to make sure those variables, we have to find out when those variables are zero because that, if they're zero, then the operation of division is not defined. And therefore, the whole function, which is made up of that operation, would not be defined either. So it would be outside the domain. Okay. So we've taken care of your four basic operations. Positive exponents, and I really I should be, as I should say, not just positive, positive integer exponents. Well, that's just multiplication over and over again. 15 squared is 15 times 15. 32 to the 18th power is 32 times 32 times 32, 18 times. So that's just repeated multiplication. So that's true for all row numbers as well. And then we come to roots. And then we come to our roots. Well, roots, there's really two situations. Specifically, we're dealing with the nth root of something. And there's really two scenarios that we have to deal with with roots. Scenario one, if it's an odd root, then x can be any real number. So cube root, fifth root, seventh root, 231st root, all good. But remember, if it's an even root, then the stuff we're taking the root of can't be negative. right? Because if you have a square root of a negative, then that's imaginary. If you have any other root of a negative, then it's going to actually be a complex answer. You might remember from uh, pre-calculus uh, what the fourth root of negative one might look like. Right, with some complex number, some complex number. And so here, the stuff we're taking has to be greater than or equal to zero. It has to be non-negative. Okay, now that takes care of your basic functions. Here in a couple moments, we'll review some of your other functions that you've come across.